So this is what Saturn does. It just condenses and squeezes and freezes and just, just says, no, you're not getting anything here. I'm taking it. I'm squeezing it off and freezing it. All right? So when we do that, we say, well, yeah, well, then the sign of Aries. What is it, what is it denying us? Life. Well, here it's not denying much because it's in its fall. So it's now got a limit to it oh. because it's fall. Oh. You see? So the fall of Saturn over here in, in Aries tells us that it's, it's still malefic, but its malefic position has been slightly altered. It's only in its fall. Because it can't operate much. It that can't whole operate battery as thing. much as it wants to because, well, look at Saturn and Aries. It more. Aries is a hot, dry sign where Capricorn or Saturn is a cold, dry sign. The only thing they have in common is dry. Well, the, the, the hot is balancing against the cold, isn't it? So you've got something here that can't completely condense. It can only go a certain degree of condensation. So Saturn and Aries will limit you, but it won't limit you as much as it could because it's only in its fall. It's bad news, but not terrifically bad news. Now, any house you place that in will then alter that Saturn somewhat as well, naturally, because there's an affinity to the houses. And uh, as we look at this, we want to know, well, what would that look like if we drew a, uh, an illustration of it? Well, imagine a high-stepping high school band. All of them in their teens. All of them good at what they do. And they do the monkey march. Now, sometimes when we watch the, uh, when we watch the uh, Super, uh, Super Bowl, the, the, the Rose Bowl, the Rose Bowl parade, you'll often see a band that's really high-stepping and fast. This is called a monkey march. Also, the goose step, which requires so much energy and ex you know, I mean, you got to really be physically fit to do a goose step. All of these show that this is really a high energy way of doing something. So, if we're watching the monkey march, and we put a 65-year-old Saturn in the middle of that monkey march. <laughs> you see now his fall. Uh -huh. Right. He'll be gasping for air and begging for a break every four steps. So this is how Saturn and Aries would literally be in its fall. In other words, Aries wants to get things done. Now, 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 now. Come on, what are you doing? Where are you going? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Saturn goes, I've got to freeze. Aries goes, no, 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 we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. Saturn says, no, I've got to freeze it all down. So you see, there's a conflict. Aries wants to go really quick. Saturn says, no, I don't want to go really quick. I just want to go, but not that fast. I want to just like, not go that fast. So it's like an old man in the monkey march. It just is not, it's out of place. It's not going to work well. And so this is what we're looking at with that kind of a situation. All right? That's how that would work. Now, Venus, we know, it's in its detriment because Venus is normally ruled by Libra, by the Libra. But in the sign of Aries, what do we have? Well, Venus is very easygoing. It's very social. It wants to simply acquire in an easy way. Passive income is a good thing for Venus. A good game of uh, partying is good for Venus, because that's our social side. We like the Venus side. Okay? But again, because it's in Aries, it's out of place. In other words, I'm in a very hot situation. And by Taurus's standards, it's a very cold, wet, a very cold, dry place. And by Libra, it's sort of a mild, airy place, dry and airy. So, here we have a situation where it's not working well by detriment, so it can't do much. Because first of all, a woman in a foundry is not going to be shoveling coal and steel as easily as any man might, just by the physical attribute. So here you might see Aries wanting to take Venus on a date. She gets all dressed up in her high heels and her best gown because she really wants to impress the guy. And where does he take her? To the dump. To the company picnic at the foundry. Yeah. And I look at her, what are you dressed like that for? 
and all the other wives are dressed in their fatigues and you know, brogan sure. boots and everything else, not doing too well. So Venus and Aries generally is completely out of sorts with what's going on. So you can see here that this can be quite a problem with that. By triplicity, we know that this is a day and a night situation. So when we see the triplicity, this is going to alter Aries quite a bit. So Jupiter in Aries is good. It's going to heighten uh, Jupiter's gifts. It's going to give you more honor because it really likes another fire sign. So the concept here of changing the, 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 the picture of Jupiter from Santa Claus into Aries, it becomes a personal Santa Claus. It starts because Aries is a personal sign. And this is why we're seeing all of this stuff going on between Uranus and Aries squaring Pluto and Capricorn. It's an us against them situation. And what's the us? Individuals demanding their individual freedoms from the tyranny of Pluto and Capricorn. That's just playing out beautifully. Syria. Yeah, I mean, it's just so easy to see astrologically. So there you see the triplicity. Jupiter in, in Aries is wonderful. It wants to give, it'll be a personal giver. Loves it. Sun here wants to be boastful, proud, and not arrogant as well as it is in Leo, but has a personal point of view that feels you need to listen to me. I have, some, I have something I can offer you, and you need to hear it. And so the sun and triplicity becomes very friendly. So sun and Jupiter means that that triplicity is a friendly term. It will help where it can, how it can. It's very really nice. Of course, the sun is an exaltation also in here, so Aries would give that a little bit more of interest uh, along that line. So, any Aries in here would certainly want to look at the sign of Leo, see where they want to extend that information, where they want to extend that gift. Any Aries in here want to look at Jupiter and see where their gifts are coming from. Are they in plenty? So if Jupiter's in Aries, that's what they're going to be looking for. So this is what Aries is going to be looking at every time you say the sign Aries. Now when you put that sign in a house, it then alters that. Because if I put Aries in the 10th house, Saturn now has an extra bump, because that's Saturn's normal house. It likes that house. It likes the idea of that house. So it would show some strength. But it would also show that this guy right here, as a ruler, would be very see aggressive. How we can place these time. planets and alter them by their pristine state. They shift, they change, and they alter by that statement. Okay? Now, if we take this down one, and we look at Taurus, we're going to see a new game. Taurus is ruled by Venus. Taurus wants things easy. It's like the passive income I was talking about a moment ago. It's talking about making it easy, doing it right, just and enjoying what you do. So wherever you see Taurus, it looks to Venus and it enjoys that particular point. So wherever your Taurus is, it will enjoy where Venus is in the chart. Loves that kind of thing. All right? And it'll exalt the moon, because the moon, remember, is greedy, and Taurus is greedy for comfort and nice things, and being cared for, and being loved, and being wonderfully treated, all that wonderful Venus stuff that Venus stares for. Okay, well in Taurus, it really will do that. It'll give you that, it'll give you a good company time. Okay, the moon will push that a little further. As you also notice that the triplicity, the friendly part of that, is Venus and moon again in triplicity, day or night. Day side, night side. Of course, that's automatic because you can see where the moon is. You know, this is automatic because you see where the sun is. All right. Mars is in its detriment here. Because again, Mars wants to get things done. It wants to get out there. It wants to get in the middle of that battle. It wants to get things done. I want, I, I, let's get the skirmish over. You know, we're tired of waiting. So they just run after this and they knock it down and run with it. However, in Taurus, this quick Aries movement has been done in what fashion? It is now placed in a fixed sign. Well, if you can't move and your feet are stuck in concrete or mud, what kind of energy is this doing? Hardly any. So Mars cannot be of much help in the sign of Taurus. It's weak here because it's in its detriment. It can't offer any assistance. 
And we always look at these planets as giving us assistance. And even when they take stuff from us, that's a form of assistance. So this is an assisting point. So Mars and Taurus then becomes detrimental because you can't achieve anything. You can't get anything done unless you do it in a very slow, methodical style and way. And usually Aries wants to get it done now. Let's get it over with. Why prolong the system? So it has to. It's here. And people who are born with Mars and Aries are generally laid back. Taurus. I mean, Mars and Taurus, they are generally laid back. Because they just, you know, I don't know, it'll, it'll come, it'll happen. You know, they just, they get used to not being able to get things done quickly, they back it up. Now you notice Gemini... <coughs> well, before we go any further... Let's help. I just noticed that there's there's no planet in fall for, ta uh, for Taurus. Who's Taurus? And the Dignities. Here? Like in Aries, you've got Saturn... Yeah. And at first I thought there's it was no fall for, for Taurus. True. Yeah, I, at first I thought it was because well, there's no opposition to the moon, you know, because the moon, the moon and sun just and have their own. It's in its exaltation. Yeah. So, but then I noticed that that's that doesn't follow through. So I was wondering if there's a reason for that or. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, I wonder, first of all, I wonder is what any, it is. Is there an exaltation in the sign of its opposite point? Where would where would be in in essence? Yeah. Where would be an exaltation for the moon? Well, it would have to be in the opposite sign of, of its exalted exalted point, which is Scorpio. Okay. Well, since it's fall, it's a, it's, it's a hertz there. See, so when you look at Scorpio, you notice the moon is in its fall there. Uh -huh. So it cannot take that position of being in its exaltation because fall is the opposite of exaltation. Right. Yeah. So you can see here that it's knocked out of that position because of the fact the opposite position of it mm -hmm. is bad news. So there's just detriment for... So it just does not going to work. It just, okay. it just goes into its fall in, in uh, uh, cancer. I mean, okay. Scorpio, but it can't do much. Okay. And it can't reflect back to Taurus because, well, it just can't. Yeah, because that's and the no, sign. So Taurus cannot have that. That's okay. why. Now look at Gemini. I mean, that thing hardly has anything. It doesn't exalt anything because, of course, nobody can out-talk Gemini. <laughs> so, so you're stuck with that one right off the bat. Okay. It does have a nice triplicity. It has it has Mercury's own ruling sign is a day triplicity, and Saturn, the ruler of Aquarius, it's night triplicity. And you'll notice these triplicities relate to the other signs by which is a fixed position. In other words, Aries has a fixed sign of Leo as its day triplicity. The fixed sign of Taurus has Venus as a triplicity. The fixed side of Gemini, or the mutable side, has that. So each one, but the fixed side is over here, Aquarius. Here we have Cancer. Well, Mars just takes that over. I'm not getting what's so obvious. <laughs> huh? Isn't that obvious? It's I mean, really, it's, it's, it's so obvious, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's a what, what? Obvious. <laughs> Called obviate. Uh huh. And obvious, summer. I don't know where but you don't get the obvious part of it? Oh, I had one of them, and then by the time you got to the second, third, and fourth, I, my, I canceled. <laughs> okay, well, canceled. all I'm saying is each one of these are going to associate with part of its triplicity in one of its fixed positions, except for water. In other words, the <laughs> fixed position is Taurus. Yeah. Well, the ruler of its fixed sign is that sound triplicity here. Yeah. The fixed sign relating in fire, the tribe in fire, is Leo. So there's a triplicity. The fixed sign of Leo, of course, is its own sign. Oh, there is no fixed sign here, so you can't use that. Could be Scorpio, but Thank that's its fault. <laughs> <that's its ball. laughs> I'm not so, the only one. So that's how it's relating, though. The how's triplicity is how it yeah. relates, and that's why it's a friendly kind of a thing. It's related to it by, somehow, by its element. So the elements want to click in and keep going with it. So okay. each it's one of this piece is here. <coughs> Pardon me? I memorized it ten times and forget it the next day. That's why we have to do a little chart. Yeah. And for those of us that 
don't remember. Okay, I don't remember either, so I have a hard time with it as well. Okay. But when you when you notice that all you gotta do is the first four signs and then they repeat themselves. Keep, yeah. Keep yeah, I saw that. I saw all so things. it's not a hard thing, man. I'll get you to remember four points. And if I was five years old when I learned that, I would remember it today. Yeah, because that's how it works. All i got to remember is who's the opposite of where, and yeah. it plays that game. See? Something okay. good is bad on the other side. Something bad is good on the other side. You're saying the that's called house reflection. Diane? Yeah. You're saying the triplicities repeat every four signs. Yeah, yeah look at I them. got that. Yeah. I, got th I could see all the airs went together, and oh. they, they all repeated each other's stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got then that. Then my explanation just messed it up. But that's it. You got it. Yeah, yeah so, I, I got that. It's just bingo. that all so of a sudden I have to stop and, okay, now this is fire, and all the fire signs are done. You know. mm -hmm. So you can see each of the fire signs mm -hmm. are going to do this all the way down the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is what the, this is called the, the, the trident. You get four of them. And so gonna, it's all going to play off. And it's, okay, it's, we'll just keep doing okay. it. <clears throat> so all the way down, we can see how the planets are going to alter in this sign. When a planet is altered, so is the sign it rules. In Aries, the fall of Saturn also says that Capricorn and Aquarius, they too are in fall. Both signs that are ruled by the planet follows its position. When, what? Just wow. Oh. Say that, okay, say it one more time about Aries. Okay. So when Saturn when is in fall, then it affects the planets that it rules. The sign. Down there sign. was a the, the sign. The planet effect affects its kingdom. It's okay. the sign it rules. So if oh. Saturn is visiting the kingdom of Aries, uh -huh. it's in, it's in a, it has a problem. Uh -huh. And so does the kingdom and of so Saturn Aquarius and Aquarius. And Capricorn. They got a problem. So the houses, uh -huh. the houses where they are on the chart. And the houses where they are on the chart also uh, have it. a weakness okay. of fall or detriment. So there's a general statement. That so that's a good. That's a that's a jewel. So that's a fall or a detriment would do the same thing. Yes, Wait. or an exaltation or anything else. All of these will oh, reflect. Shoot. In other words. Aries is if the sun is in Aries, the first thing you learn is that where's where's Leo? Because yeah. Aries is gonna love Leo. Yeah. And wherever Leo is in the chart, they're gonna love that part of Leo. Uh-huh. Okay. But they're not gonna particularly care for wherever Saturn rules. Mm -hmm. Which is gonna be from from Aries standpoint, ten eleven house. They have problems with that. Some of their friends won't be as wonderful as they could be. Hmm? Does that it also affect the first house in your chart since it's, that's a Saturn womb or Saturn joy? Or joy? It has something to do with it, but <clears throat> you have to stack this up. Right. You know that Saturn in the first house is talking about struggle. Yeah. Okay. Part of that struggle is going to come for wherever Saturn is in the chart mm -hmm. and whatever houses it rules. If it happened to be Aries in the second house, then you're going to be looking at 11, 12 house because Saturn, uh, Capricorn, and uh, Aquarius, and wherever Saturn is in the chart is also going to reflect, affect those particular trigons. It's going to affect it that way. So the house then takes on its effect the same way the planets are affected. Okay. Now that you know the pristine area of each planet. You can now move that into its next position. Is it in its fall? Is it in its next altation? What is it doing? So, she here, Libra Libra Libra, is going to love Saturn because Saturn is so cool to that. It gives it strength and power by exaltation. And so do the two houses that it rules. When we look at the football chart, did you notice Saturn and exaltation just happen to rule the seventh house giants? It loved them. Sun didn't like Leo so much because it was in detriment. Well, so was Leo. The sign follows the same configuration that the planet does by dignity. Okay, and I, it, it said the other way. I'm saying, the dignity of a planet. 
planet, okay, that's what I said, affects the sign and the ruler of the extension of it? Yeah, you can, you can say the extension. Uh, it, it affects it through the A, B, B, C mark. But what happens is that, let's, let's take a look at cancer. Cancer hates Saturn. Hates it. Yes. Cancer yes. just hates Absolutely Saturn because it, yeah. it's in its detriment. Yeah. So anything Saturn has rule over, which are those two houses and whatever, I mean those two signs and whatever houses those two signs are in, going to have a problem with that. So let's say that we had Cancer, oh, third house. Okay, that would put Saturn in the ninth house and the tenth house. And if Saturn was in Cancer in the third house it would have a problem with nine, ten house authority. Probably wouldn't go to school because it doesn't like the way teachers teach. It doesn't like the idea of how all of that is put together as far as a, um, uh, a, 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 a curriculum goes. would hate that. Every boss it worked for it couldn't, couldn't possibly listen to that guy speak another moment. <clears throat> Bosses would be ugly. They would not be, they would not be well accepted. And wherever Saturn was, in this case, third house, who loses? The third house, because it's a house of exploration. How to get new ideas, new thoughts, new thinkings, and learning all about other areas in your life. That's your third house. Are you saying, in essence, if we use the natural house of Aries ruling the first, Libra the seventh, then that's the principle you're following? Then? You can follow that principle, or you can just follow where it is in the natal chart. Okay. But you can add that if you like. But well, now you've got to double. the houses for me because. Yeah, well, you can do that. And that, if you can do that and see it, then no matter where you shift the chart, the same principle applies. Yeah. So it, nothing is going to change. But yes, to answer that question, it's a yes. But remember, it's flexible. Because mm -hmm. Aries, is, Aries rising just happens to work off the equinox chart. Right. See, so the spring equinox. And the reason why it's called the natural chart is because everything starts in the spring equinox. Even your solar return. You always have to do the spring equinox for the person you're doing the solar return for. Because you want to know how their environment, yeah, the immediate okay. environment, is being affected. Yeah. So now you have that, but the basic thing of that Aries first house says Mars, get her done now. But get her done now has to get her done now through a basic Saturn struggle. So it wants to outrace time if it can with Aries rising. They want to get, they want to get there quicker than, than if time catches up with them. Okay. So yeah, you, you can, but they all stack up. You see, you see, you're starting to get a whole... Actually, what you're doing is instead of reading a sentence this way, you're compiling a sentence this way. Yeah. Struggle. Fight the struggle. Where, how, and what compromises do you make to get that struggle to work for you? Now you go to the aspects. Who's helping? Because aspects are your helpmates. They're the ones that are throwing in their part as the, as the situation as well. They're helpmates. So you see the whole concept then starts trying to, what each sign does, it also translates that, uh, what each planet does also translates that to the sign. This becomes extremely important. Because once you understand how the sentence does this, you now can read the chart. Because all of us want to do this. Because mm -hmm. we're used to that. Except Chinese or do it that way. And Hebrew. Hebrew wants to do it that way. But we want to do it this way. Like the Chinese write this way, don't they? They go up and down and up and down. But well, that's what we really want to do too. We want to stack each of the meanings and then add unto and you will get a sentence from that. And that sentence will tell you all you need to know. And you end up with an aspect. You end with aspects. That's, that would be the last part, whichever way you want to start. You got it? Mm -hmm. yeah. like adjectives to the... So, so the first thing would be the joy of the planet. The first thing is the joy That's of the, the joy. planet. That's good. The second thing would be the um, sign on the cusp. The sign on the cusp. And then the third thing would be where the planet, where the ruler is, ABC. where the ruler, where the ruler of the uh, sign is. Oh, wait a minute. Where did you start? Why did we start at a base chart? Okay. So let's let's just do that while we're at it. That's, that's a, really a good point. Watch Limbaugh. I'll probably send you a. 
an iPad for that. Ooh, I want one too. Okay, when we look at a chart, what we're going to do is this. And after we do that, we're going to look at the first house just for a because. The first house tells us that our life is going to be one of struggle. We know that. End of story. So the first house talks struggle. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do, this, this is number one. Number two then becomes how do we overcome that struggle by the sign? The sign becomes number two. The next thing becomes number three, where is the ruler, ruler of the sign? Where is the ruler? So let's put the ruler of this sign over here in the fifth house. Sign ruler of the first is over here. Well, it's in a trinal place, so that's looking good, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's a, that might be a little easier to do whatever this sign over Saturn is asking of us. So this is number three. Now, the bottom house signature is Venus, is it not? Right. So that's now giving us something else to say this is going to make it easier. So I got a trine and I got a Venus uh, joy. So that's the next thing I know. So now I've got my A, B, B, C. I got the, I got the sign. Then I go to the ruler. Then I take that ruler, and I want to see where the ruler is. A good pamphlet. And that will tell me by dignity. Not a book, but a pamphlet. Here in the publishing. How strong is going to be able to react to the circumstance that we began with by dignity. Then, when we finish with dignity, which is really kind of a kind of a number four thing. I want to look at, of all things, aspects. Because the aspects will tell me what other houses are going to lend assistance, either through struggle or ease. But no matter what, it gives you an assistance. If you have to fight for something, like losing the game, that's a struggle. You've got to sit with yourself and go, oh darn it. But if you go back and analyze why you were wrong, or what the problem was, or what the stepping stone, what the stumbling block is, once you know the stumbling block, you turn it into a stepping stone. And this is what we're doing with aspects. <coughs> Who is helping them? So if I had to, if I know I'm fighting a struggle, and that's the sign will tell me how I'm going to fight it, and the ruler down here tells me what strength I have to fight it by its dignity. Then I can take a look and see if there are any aspects that are going to help that dignity even further along. So let's say that we have a very nice uh, positive chart up here. And that positive right down here is trining this. Now I've got myself the struggle, the sign by which I overcome my personal struggles, through the fifth house was going to make it a little easier to know, but I'm going to take it much more lighthearted. And whatever that sign ruler is by dignity is going to tell me how much strength I have to do that with. And then I got, oh, I've got an aspect here by trying that's going to help me even more. This person does not have a hard row to hoe because it's easy placement. In other words, this sign is a trinal aspect of here. So if this is fire, chances are that's fire. And if yeah. this is fire, chances are that's fire. So I've got a lot of fire here by this big grand trine in the essence telling me what I'm looking at at the chart. And the signs that are related to this, so is going to tell me much more. Now, if this was a sign uh, that has two rulers, like, like Mercury and uh, Saturn, Jupiter, Venus, and Jupiter, uh, they have all this information. Now it starts giving us who is going to go where and how we're going to take that to the next level. Who does what? This is a very easy chart because it's all trines 
and in the right segment. So they're going to overcome all their struggles with a light heart. They won't have a hard road to hoe because the last life was really nice. They probably gave away their fortune while they were alive. You know, the thing is, you can't take it with you. Yeah. Well, if, it, if karma is really a rule, you can't. You can't take it.